Here we're using electrode potentials to decide whether redox reactions will work or not. In the first part we've got Cr3 plus ions, so we can find the half equation that includes Cr3 plus ions and copy that one down. We can see that the same half equation also provides the water. We want to see that this will react with MnO4- ions, so we find the half equation that has these in and copy this down underneath, noting that it also brings in the H plus ions. Now we need to indicate which way we want each reaction to go. Cr3 plus is one of the reactants in the question, so we want this half equation to go from Cr3 plus to Cr2072 minus ions, which is an oxidation since the Cr3 plus ions are losing electrons to get to an oxidation state of plus 6. The other reactant is MnO4 minus, so we want this half equation to go from MnO4 minus to Mn2 plus, which is a reduction with Mn going from an oxidation state of plus 7 to plus 2 by gaining electrons. Whether the reaction actually works or not depends on the electrode potentials. We can work out the cell potential if we're to combine these two half equations, and if the cell potential comes out positive, the reaction is feasible. Remember the cell potential is the electrode potential for the reduction minus the electrode potential for the oxidation, which in this case comes out as plus 0.18 volts, so the reaction is feasible. In part B we have a similar problem to solve, so we write out the half equation involving each of the two reactants, Ni2 plus and I2. One of the given reactants is the I2, so we need this reaction to go from I2 to iodide ions, which is a reduction. Our other reactant is the Ni2 plus ions, which go to Ni atoms. This too is a reduction, so if we mix these together, no reaction is possible because there's no oxidation to supply the electrons needed to reduce either of these two species. There's no point in going any further. Without an oxidation reaction, we don't have an electrode potential for the oxidation, so we can't calculate a cell potential.